Hello everyone, I am Selva and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will understand the entire concept of KL divergence. KL stands for Kullback Leibler divergence. All right, it is named after these two authors, Solomon Kullback and Richard Leibler. It's a very fundamental concept and information theory has wide use cases in machine learning and statistical modeling. In this one, we will try to understand all the mathematical details, where it is used and how to implement it in Python. All right, we will, we will understand the formula also. Now, KL divergence is also called as relative entropy. Relative entropy. All right, but more popularly, people just refer to as refer it to as KL divergence. So, what is the fundamental purpose of KL divergence? Let's say you have two probability distributions. So, you have one distribution that goes like this, and you have another distribution that goes say like like this. Now, if you want to different, if you want to measure how these two distributions, so on the x-axis you have the uh, some values of the x variable, and on the y-axis you have the probability scores. All right. So, if you want to measure the difference or the distance between these two distributions, we can go for KL divergence. It is called as divergence and not distance for a reason. We will try to understand that later part of this video. Now, where is KL divergence commonly used? Say in machine learning, whenever you are building some sort of a models, you make some sort of an assumption about the data set. Say, let's, let's say you have a data set. You have the X variables and you have a Y variable. You want to predict the y as a function of all the different x variables that you have in the data. Now, when we begin the modeling, we make some sort of an assumption about the target variable y. All right? We may assume that the y variable follows some sort of a normal distribution or whatever distribution it is. So, let's say you have discrete values for each of the cells in the y variable. From this data, you might be able to draw a probability distribution, a histogram, say. All right? So, you have various different values of this variable y here. And you have the probability scores. So it might follow, it might follow a distribution something like this, let's say. All right, it might follow a distribution that looks like this. And we often assume that this target might follow, say, a normal distribution. Let me draw a line or a curve over here. It might follow a normal distribution. You can visually see that it follows a normal distribution. But is there a way to quantify this? What if there was another distribution that fits this data even better? Right, that could be another distribution, it could be a gamma distribution or a different version of a normal distribution itself. What if there was another distribution that, that fits this data better? Now, to quantify this, this is where KL divergence. Now, here is the formula for KL divergence. Say you have two different probability distributions, P and Q. KL divergence is nothing but the negative summation for each value of x, the negative summation of the probability of x as per probability distribution P multiplied by natural log of q of x, which is the second distribution, divided by p of x. Now, you can take this negative sign inside here into this formula. This formula will become summation of for all values of x, p of x multiplied by natural log of p of x by q of x. Now, here, remember, if you remember the formula for entropy, the formula of entropy is nothing but minus summation of, of course, minus summation of P natural log of P. Minus P log P is nothing but entropy. Now here, since Q of X is also involved, this is called as, KL divergence is also called as relative, relative entropy. Now let's try to understand how this formula behaves. Let's say if P of X and Q of X were very close to each other. For example, you have two distributions. You have two distributions P and Q. Let me draw P like this. You have one distribution which is P here and Q is also very similar to P, right? very close, almost exactly, let's say P and Q are exactly the same. All right, this is Q, the one in green is Q. If P and Q are exactly the same, what would happen here in this formula? P and Q, P, P of X divided by Q of X for any value of X, P of X divided by Q of X. This whole term is going to be equal to one, both of them are equal. And if you take a log of 1, natural log of 1, this becomes 0. So this entire term, this entire term becomes, becomes 0 when P and Q are equal. Whereas if P and Q are farther away from each other, let's say, and let me draw Q over here, farther away from each other, for a particular value of X, let's say X is here, for this value of X, the value of, let's say this is Q, the value of Q is much smaller compared to P. All right. In that case, 
in this case or for this particular value of for this particular value of x the value of p here this is p the red red line p is much smaller than q all right in either of these two cases for for a case where p and q are far from each other all right in such cases this term here within brackets this term here is going to be either very large very large or is going to be a very small fraction in either of these cases this entire term is going to be away from zero in such cases the kullback leibler divergence is going to be away from zero so what do we find the fundamentally understand from this when kl divergence value is equal to zero or very close to zero it means that the two distributions that we are comparing are very close to each other now one important property of kl divergence that you need to understand is the kl divergence is not a symmetric symmetric measure i'm not using the word metric here it's not a statistical metric why because the kl divergence of p and q is not the same as kl divergence of q and p why remember the by the nature of the formula the formula was the kl divergence of p and q was nothing but for all values of x p of x multiplied by natural log of p of x by q of x all right but if we do kl divergence of q and p this would become this would become everything will be the same only here it will be q of x q of x multiplied by log log of q of x by p of x is it right both of this are not the same so in practice people use something called as the jensen jensen shannon shannon divergence all right simply refer to as js divergence now this is a symmetric measure because the js divergence of p and q is exactly the same as the js divergence divergence of q and p now how is this possible it is purely based on the kl divergence itself where jensen shannon divergence nothing but half of the kl divergence of p and m plus half of the kl divergence of q and m but what is m what is m here m is nothing but m is nothing but p plus q divided by 2 so what this essentially means what it works out to is say you have two two different distributions say this is your p and let's say this is your q this is your q we form m such a way that at any point in x at any point in x the m will be nothing but this plus p plus q divided by 2 right so here m will be something something over here it might be a summation or a midpoint the average of these two distributions basically so what that means is at any point x say at this point m will be this point plus this point where it meets p right this point plus this point divided by 2 which which lies somewhere over here i'm just imagining this that's how m is created once you create m we can compute the js divergence based on this formula let's now see how to implement kl divergence in python it is quite straight forward you just know, need to know what function to use this is available in scipy.stats the function that you want to use is entropy now this function acts as entropy for a single probability distribution as well as relative entropy when you pass in two different probability distributions so we have entropy function here and i am defining two different arrays so these are two different probability probability distributions here only two values exist in each of these distributions p and q this can contain more number of values also as many number as you want now here what what you need to do to implement or calculate kl divergence is use entropy here pass in the two different distributions basically numpy arrays that will give you the kl divergence here the output is this one now we know that kl divergence is uh, not a symmetric measure so if you do entropy pass in q first and then p it will give you a different value all right so that's how it behaves if you want to know more about the entropy function within jupyter notebook just pass in question mark and entropy that will give you the more 
detailed explanation of what happens underneath now if you pass in the second parameter qk which is an optional parameter only if qk is passed it will compute the relative entropy which is nothing but kl divergence if this is not passed if only pk is provided it will provide the regular entropy the value of regular, regular entropy now here we are passing entropy q followed by p you get a different value here that's how kl divergence works we know that if you want to compute kl divergence from scratch you can define your own function this returns the formula for kl divergence that will give you the output as well so that's all for this one i will provide a link to this notebook as well in the description if you have not yet done please subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so that you get all the notifications i also teach end to end machine learning at machinelearningplus.com please do check that out also